Welcome back, you beautiful souls. We are continuing our very important discussion on sleep this morning. Is it a siesta or a midday nap? Um, is it good for you? It's certainly good for me. What are the benefits and what are the drawbacks? Well, we're going to find out right now as we chat to sleep recovery specialist Barry Bridges. He's going to have the answers, hopefully, man. I'm, I'm putting on a little bit of pressure here, but the people need some help. Barry, a very good morning. How are you? Good morning, Graham. Good morning, Zoe. And um, thank you guys for having me on the live show. Oh, yeah, thank you, Barry. Pleasure. I'm a bit scared to ask this, but is it okay to need a nap during the day? Because I'm one of those individuals, on my off day, I plan my day around a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a quite a debatable topic on, at the moment in definitely in the research field of sleep science. I think it will vary from person to person. Um, a lot of the research will show that having a nap, a long nap can be a bad effect to your sleep at night. Um, and then some athletes will say, you know, especially athletes I work with, when they have shorter naps, that actually helps them with their performance. So I think it's going to depend on each individual. I think it will also depend on each person's different chronotype, whether you are a morning person or an evening person. I think that's a really important um, thing to know. You need to understand what you are so you can understand your sleep habits in order for yourself to prepare to get better naps during the day and if you are going to need these naps um during the day as well because a lot of research shows that people that do have continuous naps or naps during the day on a long period um are obviously catching up on sleep quality in the previous night so they're not getting the amount to right sleep in the evening um so for they have to obviously nap during the day hopefully they're not napping behind a steering wheel um, <laughs> or something like that um so yeah it's a very debatable topic there's no real right answer to it. Um, it's going to vary on person to person. And obviously another thing important is their unique work schedule. Um, you know, office workers and athletes. Um, I work with a lot of DJs, musicians as well. They all have different unique schedules. So everyone's going to obviously try to take a nap where they can and the recovery is going to be completely different. Mm. Um, and when you employed, I understand that this when dealing with sleep deprivation and, and insomnia, it is, uh, it's not a kind of cookie cutter, one solution for all because it's a personal experience with each individual. But if we look at employing the nap as a tool in your arsenal, what are the, the benefits from taking a nap and what is the ideal duration of that nap? Mm. Okay, so benefits of nap will... Uh, it will help you obviously improve your recovery, your mental physical recovery. Um, duration, you can look at anything between 20 to 90 minutes. Now, 90 minutes might be long for some people. I sometimes will take a nap for 90 minutes. Um, so that's kind of the playing duration. Another way to look at a nap, because um, a lot of people might find it difficult to nap during the day, they just don't have the time period, is something that I call two things, either technology breaks or these mental recovery breaks. Okay. Now, what like you that. can do with this is um, take your eight hour work day and every 90 minutes break up a, a time where you can have a shut off from technology. You'll, so basically what happens is you are actually sleeping during that time, but you're actually awake at the same time. So that's actually considered a nap. A nap doesn't mean that we actually have to fall asleep. Um, it can also mean we're wide awake, but we're just doing something else. So. A technology break and a mental recovery break could be something like making tea, going for coffee, using the bathroom. Um, if you're at work, going to your colleague to speak about how's your day been. Um, this is a time where we obviously want to get away from technology. We want to spend at least two to five minutes away from technology. And you'll find that your brain will be more rebooted, you'll be more focused, and you'll have better mental recovery. Because we actually want to start building up mental recovery at work, whatever we're doing, and so this will allow our brain to switch off easier in the evening, therefore we'll improve our sleep quality. Oh, and speaking of that, that sleep quality, I mean, this whole morning our focus has been on mm. sleeping. How does temperature affect one's sleep? I know it's different for people, you know, during summer and winter, but how does temperature really affect one's sleep? Well, ideally it's best to have a low body temperature. And if we look at what degrees you need, you need about 18 degrees Celsius. And if you're looking at Fahrenheit, you're looking at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what you'll need for the body temperature. So what happens is when we get into a cooler body temperature, and I, I sleep way better in um, winter than summer. Summer I toss and turn a lot because obviously 
it's very hot. I don't know how you guys feel in summer, but yeah, summer's a bit of a little bit of a struggle for me to fall asleep. But winter, I definitely get a lot of quality hours of sleep. So what happens is when we enter this cool um, body temperature phase, we start building up melatonin. So melatonin is that sleepy hormone that obviously build up during the day that goes into our brain. And that melatonin will last body temperature to cool down and obviously this promotes sleep and actually will help us to fall asleep quicker in the evening as well. So it also promotes what we call sleep onset, meaning we get to fall asleep far quicker. Um, in summer, obviously, it's a little bit of a struggle because it's very hot. You know, our summers get extremely, extremely hot, and yeah, it's. But there are different tools out there. Um, there's a, a sleep company I work for or affiliated to. It's actually called Deep Sleep Wear. Um, you can Google it. It's a sleep hoodie brand that actually modifies your body temperature and allows you to wow. um, your body temperature to stay at a certain way. And yeah, if you use my sleep coach, you can definitely also get a discount of that as well. So that's a new tool in America. It's very popular. It's used with um, a lot of global superstars like your athletes, etc. And it's good to be part of their team as well. Oh, oh we buddy, we try that. Yeah, we're going to send. Look, I'm not a yeah. I'm not a superstar athlete, but um, I can tell you, yeah. I I need to to operate at that level with my two year old and my five year old. Yeah. So I'm going after that. Barry yeah. Bridges, sleep recovery specialist. You can find him at at Successful Sleeper, and I would suggest you give him a shout. Maybe DM him if you've got any questions and start that relationship. And I like the fact that we are delving into yeah. some some practical tips here that we can utilize. Maybe something like just the temperature is that missing piece of the puzzle for you. But keep your suggestions and tips coming on our WhatsApp line.